Hey Robot Makers, how are you doing? I've been waiting so long to show you this, I cannot wait. And I'm also so tempted to do it in a really high voice because it's so small. <laughs> I'll not do the whole episode in falsetto, I promise. So let me get over to Keynote and show you what this is all about. So <laughs> I'm so excited that I've not even done my intro. So I'm Kevin McAleer, come with me as we build tiny robots and bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. So today's episode is all about the SMARS Mini. So if you're familiar with the regular SMARS robot, this robot is a tinier version than this and SMARS is already quite a small robot. So it's about 50 millim five, five centimeters, five millimeters. We can have a look on the overhead in a second just to get an exact measurement of this thing, but this thing is tiny. So let's get back to our keynote. <laughs> so the design goals for this, um, I wanted to create a smaller version of SMARS, first of all. So there's a 3D rendering of this. And uh, I wanted to do this in Fusion 360. I'm really stoked about Th Fusion 360. Everything is Fusion 360 at the moment. So I'm trying to really get to grips with that tool. Um, yes, yeah, so I wanted to create a smaller version of that. I wanted to use a time of flight sensor. I've been looking at these, they are very cheap and they are um, just as, Let's grab one of these. They're just as good, if not slightly better, than our regular friend here, the uh, ultrasonic rangefinder. The difference with the time of flight ones is they use lasers, laser beams. Um, I wanted to use the um, a small motor driver aboard as well, so I've got one of those to show you just on the side. And a, another chip that came out this week based on the, the chip at the moment, the Raspberry Pi Pico, um, is the Pimeroni Tiny 2040. So it uses the exact same chip uh, as the Pico, but in an even smaller form factor. So we're gonna have a look at that as well. And I would say this is a kind of intermediate build just because it's fiddly and small. So the 3D design is very, very compact. So it's made up of a chassis, um, a bit like the regular SMARS, it has wheels. Now, one of the differences with the wheels on this, um, unlike the regular SMARS robot that has essentially powered and unpowered wheels, um, all wheels are exactly the same on this. However, um, some are powered and some are not powered. So I've just uh, made the design much simpler. So it just means you have to print out one type of wheel four times. Um, it has a motor holder, so it's just something for the um, the motors to be sort of held in place. Uh, it has a little face, similar to the original SMARS, but instead of using this, it's going to have the uh, time of flight sensor in there is instead. And it's going to have a backpack. I've not designed that yet. Uh, that's on the way. But I wanted to show you this. So look at this animation here. You can see all the different parts sort of coming together. The chassis there. We've got the uh, motor holder and the motor driver board. We've got the two little N20s. We've got the wheels. Um, there's a little time of flight sensor, that little black thing, which goes into the sort of the slit of the eye. That's the time of flight sensor. And then on the back there, which I haven't quite designed yet, is the, um, the tiny 2040. So it's a tiny little board. So tiny parts for a tiny robot. So let's have a look at some of the electronic parts. So the range finder, it's a laser range finder, um, very low power, very small, physically very small as well, which is good for us. So that's the VL53L0X time of flight sensor. Works in the same kind of principle as our um, regular ultrasonic one, but instead of bouncing off um, sound waves, it bounces off a tiny little laser, laser beam. Then we have the, uh, the motor driver board. So you might have seen a few of these before, the L298N. So it's a pulse width modulation um, configured board. It can have two motors on it, perfect for what we need, just the right size as well. And um, we also have the N20 motors. So I've designed the entire thing around these motors. Um, I was looking at the other day, let me see if we can find um, the actual part. So I was designing my crab robot and um, where the crab's little claw um, has a, a, a servo that fits, all fingers and thumbs here, fits into this little thing. I was looking at this and I was thinking, you know, that's not much bigger than, um, than one of the, those uh, motors. If I just go and grab one of the motors off here, you know, I could design a little smiles that's just got two of these. So that's exactly what I did. I cracked open Fusion 360 and uh, got design in there. And then finally we have the chip itself. So the Tiny 2040, that's what it looks like. Uh, it's the exact same chip using the Raspberry Pi Pico. It just has less IO pins on the side. But it's got more than enough for us. If we just need 
um, a data and a clock for the time of flight. And then we just need um, four pins for the, for the motor driver and anything else we want to add to it. So that's more than enough. So if you like this video so far and you like this series, um, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so that you know when uh, when I go live because um, some of the midweek ones are a bit random. Sometimes they're uh, on a Wednesday, sometimes they're as late as a Friday. So um, helps the channel grow, helps me get uh, an understanding of what people like, what people don't like and um, gets us towards that magical thousand subscriber mark, which uh, I'm looking forward to. So let me get back to our slides there. So let's have a look at how we design this, how the Royal Wii, how I designed this in Fusion 360. So like I said, I designed this around these N20 motors. Uh, this is designed to perfectly fit that. So the chassis is based on the... So this is the... Um, this is a modified version of the SMARS chassis. I designed one that had a little slot for the battery. Uh, but you can see there the same kind of design there. We've got the little stub wheel stubs for the wheels. Um, we've got the usual kind of cutout on the side, and there's a sort of cutout on the front and back as well. So what I had to do um, when designing this was think about here, here, here it is, and here it is in comparison with the regular Smars. So you can see that it's quite a bit smaller, quite a bit smaller. They're sort of right next to each other. Um, so yeah, what I had to think about was so this is the very first version that i i printed out and you know i designed it so that the motors could actually go in there but what i hadn't thought about was you have to put the motor in at an angle and then kind of push it into place so the original version was a very very tight fit so what i had to then do was do a sort of keyhole version of that so if i just hold that there you can see there's a sort of keyhole and when you're pushing the motor through then it kind of dips down do it that way and then clicks into place there. So nice and simple. So I'll, I'll show you the construction of it um, in a second. So that's the chassis. Um, the motors themselves, it's just the two regular um, motors that we use in the Smiles. Just take that out and put that back. Perfectly designed for that. There's a little ridge between them that just keeps them in place and uh, friction also keeps them in place as well. And then there's the wheels. So I took the sort of design cues from the regular Smiles. I thought, should I do tracks for this? I bet we could do tracks, but they would be very fiddly to uh, to push together with the uh, the filament. So I've just left them as regular wheels for now. Um, I might need to re-engineer them a little bit because they're a tiny bit tight. Um, but if you sort of play around with them, um, they, they soon get loose, loosened up. So yeah, there's the range finder that fits at the sort of points forward. Um, the face sort of holds that in place. I tried to give the original look of the smiles with the, the sort of eyes at the front. And then there's a little motor holder board um, that um, just keeps the motors in place and also holds um, the motor driver, which is the driver board there. And then finally, all together, we've got the, the tiny 2040 at the back. That's where the backpack is going to be. That's just going to be a little thing on the back to, to hold on to that. So I'll show you it um, in person in a second. Uh, and the good thing is you can download this today. You can go to Thingiverse, you can go to 4783781. That's the thing. Uh, and you can grab all the files yourself and um, yeah, download that today. That's a previous render. I was just looking at those wheels thinking, those wheels are very smooth. Yeah, the, the, the wheels on the, the smiles now, let me show you what it looks like. Um, it off, in fact, so if I go over to uh, the main, thing there you can see the wheels there they are and I've got two motors in place there and um, you can see what that looks like and there's a little motor board so that little board there it's got little cutouts on it so that when we we solder the, the pins into place um, that can sort of snugly fit into place there like so um, and then that just goes onto the top there. Let me just get the front. That's the front there. And that will just hold them in place like so. So if I do that, you should be able to see it. There we go. So it's very nice, tight fit. All fits together nice and snug. Right, let's get back over to Keynote. And there is just one more thing about this as well. <laughs> so. 
let's get over to the uh, the overhead. Um, when I was designing this, um, I was playing around with this thing, and I thought, you know, Smiles is. Yeah, let's get back over to the keynote. I don't want to ruin the surprise. Smiles is modular, so you know it wouldn't really be a robot without having some kind of extra modules on there. So, yeah, I designed a little scoop for it as well. <laughs> so this is like a little add-on scoop that you can uh, replace the face with if you if you want to have that instead. Let me just uh, put that back onto there. There we go. So let's have a look at that up front. There we go. That's what the little scoop looks like. So at the moment that's uh, affixed. It doesn't sort of um, articulate. It'd be very easy for me to do that if we wanted to have a little, um, you know, moving scoop there. But if we get that alongside the original one. In fact, it can it can fit inside the scoop of the original Smiles. That's how small this thing is. Cool. So demo time. Let's have a look at this over on the uh, the overhead camera. So I'm just going to move this Smiles out of the way a second so we can take a look at this. So that's the original design that I did that had lugs on all four wheels. But what I found was once the motor is actually in place there, so if I put the motor in place there, push that down, same on that one there. Um, if those lugs were still there, there's no way you can squeeze them together so the wheels wouldn't sort of lock into place. So that's the motors there. And like, you know, if you look there, the friction keeps them in place. Um, if I get my little version and put that next to it there so you can see and this little board here is what we can put the motor driver board into so I'm just going to put it um, let's put it that, that orientation there so I'm just going to do that these are quite a tight fit as well so you can see there that's now in place and that can fit nicely in there like so we have the little face at the front that's what it looks like and that will just nicely slide into place there like so and it's all sort of a design to fit and it's quite hefty it feels quite chunky quite solid um, there's the time of flight sensor so i'm going to put this onto the main camera so that you can see that as well so this thing is absolutely tiny let's see if we can get a, a closer look at that so that little black thing there that's the actual laser there's two little dots and um, yeah, it just uses um, uh, I to C. So you've got the system clock and system data at the bottom. You've got voltage and ground, and that's all you need. So absolutely tiny thing. Let's get back over to the overhead. So the idea there is that that just slots into place and presents itself just through that little slot, just like so. A bit of a tight squeeze there. I'm going to see if I can jiggle th these things around a little bit better. And um, this thing at the moment hasn't got a, a backpack to go into, so I'm going to create one of those. But this is a, you can see there, that's the tiny. I'll go over to the main camera again so you can see this. So this is the Pimeroni Tiny 2040. Let's see if we can get a better zoom on that. There we go, 2040. If I flip it round, you can probably just about make out the Raspberry Pi logo there, just in the very middle there. Got the debug pins on the back. Interestingly, has USB-C, and um, it's got two buttons as well, sort of a left and right. And in the very middle, it has a little LED. So if I actually plug this in, let's see if I've got this plugged in here. Um, actually, that's the wrong cable. Can I plug this in to show you? Let's see if we can get it at least powered up. I plug this into here. So if I'm going to plug this in, let's see if we can get this on camera. The cable's really, really short. So it's just down here. If I can get it to uh, zoom in on that, I don't think I can actually. Well, that's the, the LED lighting up there. You can see that little light. Anyway, that's, that's the, uh, the tiny. And these things are very cheap. Um, I think that was about eight pounds to buy. So it's a little bit more expensive than the, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico, um, but only a little bit more. So that's going to um, allow us to do all kinds of clever things in MicroPython. So there, there it is. That's going to allow us to do all kinds of clever things like drive the thing forward and, uh, you know, sense the 
we send the, the time of flight sensor sent objects in front of us all that kind of clever stuff and we can reuse any code libraries that we've created already as well so i've got my calipers here i just uh, zero them out and you can get an idea of just how small this thing is so if i put that there it's pretty much 30 30 millimeters by 35 millimeters i think i said it was 50 which is the if you look at the wheels it's just over 50 there with the wheels so there are the wheels you can have a look at those as well let's get it onto the main camera show you what that looks like as well there we go so these are a little bit stiff at the moment they do they do turn on the motor there if i get a little i've got two coin batteries here let's see if i can get some power into this so i have ordered um a small lipo battery um, it's actually the ones that make up this one so this is actually two lipo batteries you can see just seen the package there there's a sort of top and a bottom one um, and this is the kind of thing that i'm looking to power it with there's not very much space in it to to power it to be honest let's get back over to the overhead and see if we can make these wheels turn around a little minute so if i just use these two coin cell batteries get them the right way around so these are three volts each so that'll be six volts you can see the little wheel there spinning round. Doesn't sound very happy, does it? Let's try the other ones. That's a bit quieter. There we go. So maybe we could use the coin batteries instead. I don't know how long they would last, though, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show you this. Um, I'll show you in the Fusion 360 now as well. Um, so let me just come back over to Fusion 360. And let me bring that up. And we can have a look through how this has been designed. So let me just get into the right screen there. Right, so if I come over here, uh, you can see there we've got all the different um, parts that make this up. So we have uh, the motors themselves. In fact, if I just turn all these off and just isolate let's try that isolate the chassis let's have a look at this thing so let's bring the motors in one at a time so there's one motor there's the second motor and you can see there it's been perfectly designed to fit them in there and indeed it does just about fit everything that we need in there there's the wheels let's have a look at one of the wheels um, what we can do with a wheel actually we can inspect it with our section analysis tools if i use that face there to sort of push it through we can have a look what this looks like on the inside so let's just flip this round uh, so you can see there that's the cross section of the the spindle which has that cut out section that's how the, the wheel actually grabs um, what it needs to 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 spin the wheel properly and let me just push that bit further back and then there you can see there is also the the cutout which is for the regular unpowered wheels so that's how there's just one design that fits all of the wheels. There we go. So we can turn off that section analysis now. So let's bring in the other wheels as well. So there we go. Let's go to the top view and see the other wheels coming in. And then we have the, the face, which looks like this. Let's have a look at it a bit closer up. So it has that cutout area there for the time of flight sensor. So let's put that little tiny flight sensor in there. So we can we can have a look at that if we just turn off the face for a second we can see what that looks like so there we go it's got this little black area that's the thing that sends out the the laser uh, and bounces it back so one of the design challenges there was sort of how do we get this thing to fit inside this face how big does this face need to be so i've had to sort of bend the head pins right over and if we actually look at that a bit closer you can see that's exactly what i've had to do there Maybe it's easier to see on this uh, this bigger screen. So if I do that, you can see there, I've had to sort of bend the, the pins right over and then uh, just work them around there. So I've not actually plugged them in yet. I've got to wire this whole thing up. So when I get my battery, we can uh, we can see all, how all that fits together. Let's get back over to that. Um, so what else have we got to have a look at here? Then there is the motor, um, hold, well, motor driver board. And we have a holder for that so let me just find the holder there it is so that's the the driver board and it has a little holder that it sits in there nicely as well 
Uh, I was thinking about putting like a little bump in there. And in fact, the first iteration did have a bump, but um, I found that it didn't really need that. It, it just pressure fits in there just nicely without that. So that's fine. I did have to sort of just make sure that this had um, some holes on the back. Let me just turn off that and the motors and just flip this over to show you what I'm talking about. So if I just uh, flip this over onto the bottom, like so. So actually I've not brought that version in on this design. Let me just go out to, to here and I can show you what that actually looks like. There we go, the driver holder. click that so you can see there it's got these little holders holes in it and they are for the either pushing through a little header pin uh, like a DuPont connector um, or for you know if you wanted uh, it, the solder points as well so the solder isn't flush with the bottom when you when you solder the pins on uh, there's like a little bit of solder showing through there so that's what that's for let's just close that out let's bring everything back in there so let's turn them back on um, and let's just flip this round so we can see it again. And then the, the Pimeroni Tiny, I've modeled that up as well so we can see what that looks like just as a shape. And what I've been tending to do there is similar to what I've done on the front there, just create like a little holder for that to go in place. And um, if we turn off the face and also the um, small range finder, there's the scoop as well. So the scoop is like a little module that comes away um, all of its own. So if I just show you on here, you can sort of just push this off and that's what it looks like it's just a little scoop loads of fun to design things like that so we're looking like what else could we do as a module what else what else <laughs> so i thought that was loads of fun um and the backpack is literally just a, a rectangle at the moment i've not designed anything further for that so let's just turn the face back on turn the scoop off and there we go so let's have a quick look um at what people are talking about in the chat let me just move over to uh back over to here I heard some sounds ping up, which means people are talking. So let's have a quick look on the uh, comments reactions. So we've um, got a thumbs up there from uh, Leaf. We have uh, Leaf or Life. How would you pronounce that? I'm not very good with uh, non-English sounding names. <laughs> Ovi says, um, uh, 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 he says, awesome. I'm just also stumbling on your name there because I'm sure um, when I heard Kelvin mention your name. He, he said it was Ovier. I always think it's Ovi. What's your preference there? So what software do you use? Software to design it or software to drive it? So this software here is Fusion 360. That's um, what I'm using. You can just see there, Autodesk Fusion 360. So that's this software that I've used to design all the different parts. And the way that I went about this, in fact, if I go back to the original chassis design, if I click on that little component there, and I um, and I isolate that by just clicking um, on isolate, which hides all the other parts. And then I just put the timeline right back to the very beginning. We can actually look at what the original sketch looks like. So let's just turn on the sketches so we can see. And what do I need to do on there? I think I just need to enable all the object visibility. There we go. So I started out by just putting um, one of the motors in place. In fact, I brought them in first and um, you know, I thought, what's the width of the motor without the spindle piece? What's the width of the motor? And let's start as, as the, um, uh, the start of that as, that as the width. And then I thought proportionally, I'd like this to look the same as the SMARS. So I looked at the SMARS and looked at, you know, what's the, what's the ratio of the width to the height? Because that's one of the key things that gives this um, that look. Um, I then extracted, extruded out. So if we just finish that sketch there, I then extruded that out. So we can see we get a block there. I then rounded off the corners again, proportionate to the size of it. I then designed the little um, holes for the wheels. I then locked into place that motor just so that we can see what that looks like. In fact, there's two of them there, just to make sure that the holes were in the right place. I then um, created a sketch, revolve that round using the revolve function. Uh, we then designed an, a little hole that goes in there as well. Um, next was the cutouts front and back. I then did some uh, nice little 
curves on here, some little uh, fillets. Um, I then, what was that then? So that was the keyhole cutting out as well. Um, and then I brought in some extra components there. So let's have a look what we've got. So that was the wheels and the face. That's what that little component is there, creating the wheel stubs. Um, I then started to, the wheel stubs start out as separate um, from the actual sh um, chassis. So what I then do is sort of just add them to it. So I create uh, replicas of that, mirror them across. Um, that little section in the middle to hold the motors in place. I then just add some fillets to that piece as well. So inside there, there's just like a little fillet you can just see there. Um, and then I join those stubs. You can see they're a different color. I join them to the chassis just using the combine tool. And then create some more sketches, which uh, I think that was actually the keyhole shape. And I then just extrude that front bit out there as well. And what's that last step there? Oh, that was just uh, creating that keyhole on the other side, and just mirroring, uh, revolving that round as a circular pattern. So that's how we designed the, the chassis. Uh, the wheels, um, pretty straightforward if we go to the wheel design. So a quick look at one of those. Again, if we just uh, unisolate that, then isolate the wheels. Sorry, I'm going so quickly here. I just want to show you the main thing we're after. There we go. So the wheels, if I go back to the beginning of those, and this was, you know, I was thinking, what's the right size for the wheels? Because you want it to kind of have that cute kind of look to it, um, but also be quite practical. That The wheels have to be larger than, um, you know, the distance from the, the, the center hole um, to the floor so that they're actually raised up a, a, um, above the floor. So it's not dragging its little belly on the floor. So 18 um, millimeters seem to be fine for that. So we just extrude that out as a, um, let's finish that design there, I'm sorry. Let's just turn these things on so we can see them. There we go. So then we extrude that out as just a regular cylinder. Um, what's that one then? So then I combine that with the wheel stub. So what that actually does is cuts out the wheel stub um, as a shape, so you can, um, and I do quite a bit of work on that there. So what, what we kind of do is like a binary difference, a Boolean difference between the wheel stub and the wheel that sat over that. So it cuts that shape out of the, the wheel. Um, so that's how we get to make sure that it's a nice, good fit. Um, I then do a bit more work inside there just to open that out a little bit. So you can just see there the difference between that one and that one is just a fraction of a, a millimeter just to make it a little bit wider. Otherwise it'd be like rock solid and it wouldn't move. Um, and then these last pieces I think are to do with, yeah, creating these sort of shapes. So if I just go back to there, let's show you that. So there's a sketch, let's see if we can find it. Let's try and find the sketch of the actual, is it that one? I can't see where it is. Yeah, essentially just to make those, that sort of radiation symbol, those um, cutouts, those three areas. Uh, I just created like a hexagon shape and just pushed some bits back and then joined them together. I think that's what that one there does in fact. Let's see if we can see the sketch. Oh, it's not that one. Which one is it? Is it the original one? There's only so many sketches on here that it could be. No, nope, can't see it. Never mind. Uh, then we just fill it with some bits, and then that piece there. I, what I will do is I create a tiny little um, rectangular shape, revolve that round uh, using the circular pattern tool, and then basically just cut out all the every other one to create that sort of tire effect. So there we go. We'll just get back to um, the main view for a second. Here's some other people. So <laughs> my Auntie Marlene says, uh, love this little robot. Yeah, it's a very cute little robot. So there, there it is again versus its, uh, its big brother. So it's absolutely tiny. You can see it's uh, barely bigger than one of the wheels. It doesn't need to have all this uh, Arduino stuff on there. It's all, 
all the brains are in there and the little motor driver board just there absolutely tiny okay so um yeah so let's see what Ovi says there he's talking about the uh, what software did we use and we were talking about fusion to to design it uh, you like the design so it's just inspired by the original smiles i've been thinking about this for quite some time but i didn't really have the design skills to do that and then the software for running it so because it's running um um because it's you know raspberry pi pico powered chip that means we can use micropython so if i plug this in i can see it in uh, either Thony or Visual Studio VS Code, and I can just write Python code to drive the motors forward. So one of the, the challenges that I've got at the moment is one of the reasons I've not made as much progress on um, on the Pico Cat, which is just that here. Um, I'm having real trouble getting these Pico chips to work with um, um, with these these boards. This is the PCA9685 board, and this is the board, if I can just get that, on the screen there so this is the one which we connect all the servos to um to drive the you know the cat so if i just get like a leg here and i plug that into one of these which is that way around like so like so um that causes like a real problem for me when i try and get this plugged into the, the pico board it's just not recognized it can detect it but i can't seem to send it any signals and there doesn't seem to be any drivers for um for the raspberry pi pico for micro python for those particular boards there is for circuit python but i couldn't get those to work either so i'm kind of a, a bit of a dead end with that so michael saying what's the topic here so this is all about um so you probably just missed um, the beginning of the show. So there's our Smars robot. And then next to it there, we have the Smars Mini, which is a very small version of the Smars robot. Just using the little uh, N20 motors, and the Raspberry Pi um, Pico powered Tiny, which is that little thing there. And um, we're also using the laser rangefinder, which is just in inside the eye there. So if you want to watch the, um, the, the beginning of the show, you'll get all the answers to that as well on there. So we covered that <laughs> Turn it off and on again. <laughs> it's, well, funnily enough, one of the, the issues that I had, I had um, just grab one of these here. So I've got like a, a breadboard and I had the Raspberry Pi just the Raspberry Pi Pico just sort of sat in the breadboard like that. And I had the pins all connected in there and I couldn't get this thing to detect anything at all. And I just need to sort of push it a bit further in. <laughs> And then things started to work. However, I still couldn't get it to work with um, that PCA 9685 board. I will continue to do that. So you will do. Great stuff. Good, good. So I think that covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this show today. Um, just wanted to sort of show you the the uh, <laughs> tiny little teeny weeny computer, tiny tiny little robot. Like I said, I'm really hard pushed not to do like a falsetto voice the whole time. It's a teeny, teeny weeny one. <laughs> but um, there we go. There's the uh, this three chassis. These things are so quick to print as well. You know, it takes a couple, literally minutes to print these things because they are so small. It's probably less than an hour to do that. And um, yeah, the the whole thing probably doesn't take two hours to print, you know, including the little bucket thing at the front. The wheels take a little bit longer cause just because they're a bit more substantial. The chassis is it's not that complex a design. And these are on like super fine mode so that they're a, they're a really nice quality print. And it's quite hefty. It feels quite heavy. I'll have to wait to see what it actually weighs. I mean, it doesn't weigh anywhere near as much as this thing. Uh, but, you know, this is fully powered. This hasn't got its battery in there yet. Um, still toying with the idea do we use some sort of coin batteries i don't think they're going to last very long with a, a raspberry pi pico um i guess they're they're going to last a, a matter of minutes if we try that but um you know they do sort of work in principle to show that the uh, the motors are working okay there we go Got a little let's try that again oops <laughs> But I need to get them running through the motorboard and controlling that properly through the chip. That's just a proof of concept to make sure they all mechanically fit together and, and work. So there's so much more we can do with um, add-ons for this. I'm thinking like, what else can we do add-on wise? And I love the fact that you can just switch these things in and like, out just like the original smiles. So we can take off that little range finder um, time of flight sensor and put on the, the scoop, the bucket 
or we can just sort of slide that back into place there. These things are such a nice fit, the way that they go together. There we go, like so. So you can see that it all very, very tightly fits into place. It's as if these boards were designed for this <laughs> rather than the other way around, rather than me just taking them there and putting it all together. I just had it all sat on top of um, literally one of these things, and I was, you know, which is the, the servo holder for the, uh, the Smiles Quad, or for the, the crab robot, the, the Pico crab. And I just need to finish off printing that as well. So once I've got the, um, the PCA9685 board working with the Pico, I'll be able to continue with the code for the, the cat. I'm hoping to get that done for Sunday so that we can carry on that series with that too. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so Luke says printing the chassis now on his <laughs> tiny Voron in ABS. Fantastic. Let me know what you think. Uh, it's a bit of a tight fit putting the motors in, I will be honest, but um, you know, I can I can show you that on the screen now. It does work. Uh, let's just take them out and show you what that looks like. To, uh, quickly do that. There we go. So there's the, the chassis. Let's just show you that. Here's one of the little motors, the N20s. And um, we've got that little keyhole shape there. So we just need to push that in through the keyhole like so, a bit of an angle. And you just push it till it clicks. And it's just going to sit there. Friction is going to hold it in. Make sure you put the, the wires on before you put them in. You can get them out quite easily, to be honest. Just get a screwdriver like so and just give it a bit of a wiggle under there and it'll just pop out like so so you can get them in and out quite easily and here's the one I prepared earlier it's got the uh, the wires just coming out the side there in fact if I just pull this board off the top there take the scoop off you can see there the wires that's the sort of configuration I've just got them coming out the side and then the motor holder board like so um, just sort of sits on there. In fact, it sits that way round. So, fits that, that way round. And we can either have the, the scoop. The idea is these things are all designed to just perfectly fit together like so. So you can see there, it's not going to fall out. And the, uh, the little power board just fits in there as well. So them little holes are for where the, the solder points are. So that'll just fit into place just like so. Just like that. There we go. Cool. So once I've got the code written for that, I'll share that. Um, I'll, I'll update this video, but I'll also share that uh, repository as well. You know me, I like to share everything. So um, thanks everybody for watching. This was just a reasonably quick video. I mean, we'll say that we've been going 45 minutes now. Um, so Leaf is saying, uh, I've got the A833 dri uh, driver for the motor. Will this work? I'm not sure what size that looks like. Um, you might just, I don't know if you've got Fusion 360, but you might just need to find, um, you know, one that physically fits. So I'm just trying to get this out. So there you go. That's what that one looks like. I don't know what they're actually called other than the L298N, I think it is. I think they're just like a generic, there's no branding on this one. I, I ordered a couple of these, they were very, very cheap. And then I've just designed this little holder board. This is the original one that had the little knobble there, which, that, that hole there, sort of goes into the place. But what I found was if you just sort of put them in, put them in at a bit of an angle, give it a bit of a twist, and then just let it sit down, it will push in absolutely flat, like so. Um, perfectly into place. So it says it's the same motor driver that came with the Pico Explorer board from Pimeroni. Not sure. Give it a go. See if it works. It should work fine. It says these are pulse width modulation controlled. And you can see there from the pinouts that are on them. Um, just hold it so you can see it there. It's got int 1, 2, 3, 4 down that side there. And then it's got motor A and motor B on there. And what I assume is you just put the positive and negative to each of those and then on the other side there that's where the pins go through from the the pico um, and there'll be one for um, speed and there'll be one for direction so good good i'm glad you enjoyed that <laughs>
print is complete in one hour. Do you have a Discord? Do you know, we don't have Discord. Um, I don't have a lot of time to, to do chatting and stuff. I do have the small robots group on Facebook. In fact, if you head over to Facebook, dot com slash groups slash small robots that's where i will hang out and uh, talk to anybody that's interested on there and post pictures of all the robots as well so that's probably the best way to get hold of me um, i don't tend to go on discord too much so um yeah that's that's probably the best way to get hold of me um if you want to support the the channel though um i do have the uh if you want to support the show, buy me a coffee. If you go to buymeacoffee.com slash Kevin McAleer, my name, uh, that'll help uh, pay for another year's worth of the show. So it'll help pay for all the hosting, all the royalty free music, all the graphics software I use to do all this sort of graphics and so on, the streaming software, Ecamm, and all the equipment that I use, all the overhead cameras and lights and stuff. You have no idea how much this stuff costs. I've, I've not made any money on this whatsoever, I promise. So yeah, the, the website where I put all the um, the stuff is smilesfan.com. We'll show you that in a second. And I do go live every Sunday as well. So seven o'clock um, Greenwich Mean Time. You can see all the different time zones there. We've got the Americas and Canada on the left. We've got um, the European zone, um, Russia, Pakistan, India in the middle. And then on the right, we've got um, Australia and China. I think a bit of Russia. And um, I also talked about the website as well. So yes, um, I'll put the, uh, any code and some tutorials on there as well. Um, in the fullness of time, I've not done that yet. I have put on the Pico Cat stuff that's coming along. So there's an, a new little icon on the top menu bar for Pico. But if you want to look at anything to do with Smiles, there is loads of stuff. This is smilesfan.com. So lots of stuff on there to do with Smiles robots. So of course the Smiles mini is going to go on there um, and I'll uh, Put everything that I develop on there. I'll put all the STL file links on there, all the different components that you need. Link to this particular video, and um, what else will I put on there? Um, the the Thingiverse. Um, if you want to get the the, the uh, STL files from there as well, um, any source code that I write, I'll put on there too. So I think that's all my call to actions, as we call it in the business. <laughs> um, I think I've shared all of them with you. So I'll just get back to there and. Um, so obvious saying uh, do you think it's possible to get the code to use absolutely so yeah i'll uh, i'll share that i've not written any code for this yet but uh, it'll be very similar to the code that we've written already um i have written that for um the arduino for doing sort of motor control backwards and forwards i am thinking about is there um, a bluetooth module we can have on this we might need to create like a little a little truck that goes behind it that, um, it's got some wheels on that can hold a, uh, the Bluetooth module because it's just not big enough to have everything in there. Unless I can find a Bluetooth module that's just absolutely minute. Um, so yes, I'll share the code with you on that one. Um, I was also looking at this book, um, which is a very old book about Spectrum. Spectrum is a computer from back in the day. And uh, they have some really interesting code listings in here, but this is all in basic. But converting from basic to, to Python is uh, pretty straightforward, to be honest. There's an interesting um, piece of code in here that I was looking for, um, and it's it creates mazes. Um, so I was looking at, you know, can we create something similar? Yeah, that's what it creates there. You just see a little mazes, it's just like a little random maze generator. I thought it might give that a go in Python as well. I'll share any code like that uh, with everyone. Oh, very kind. So um, somebody just bought me a coffee. Thanks for that, Leaf. I'm very much appreciative of that. And I'm also appreciative of anybody else that's bought me a coffee so far. Um, that helps pay for the Fusion 360 license. Um, that thing's about £435 per year. Not cheap at all, but um, you can see what I've started to do with this. Starting to knock out these, uh, these robot designs left, right and centre. I'm already working on another robot design. Uh, I'll share that one with you when I've got a bit further along with it. But uh, that's going to be a little bit bigger than this. I wanted to go as small as I could. I was even thinking about doing a Smiles Nano, which is just one motor. Um, and maybe just having a little cog on there and uh, a little axle that that one motor powers. And I was even thinking about a way. There used to be a robot, no, a, a um, remote control truck that I had in the 1980s. And um, it didn't have any um, like microcontroller in there. Um, it had um, a microphone and if you clapped, it would change direction. So it would go forward. And if you clapped like that, that sound made, um, you know, the microphone peak. And if it peaked, it would 
you know, send a signal to say reverse the direction, but it did it in like discrete components. So no microcontroller, this was all like transistors and stuff. Um, but what it did that I was fascinated with was it only had one motor, yet it could go in different directions. So it could go forward or it could go backwards and it would turn as it went backwards. And it was to do with the way that the wheels, uh, when it went forward, they sort of pushed into place in a sort of forward direction, but they were pivoted. So when it went backwards, it kind of pulled the axle round and would make it reverse. So you could make this go in any direction. You just had to wait while it turned to the correct angle and then you could make it go forward by clapping again. And it was just one motor. So I was thinking about something similar. So imagine in this chassis, but just being one motor wide and having a little axle. I mean, it's not going to be much smaller than that, to be honest, but... I was thinking about Smiles Nano, but then I thought, you know, that's probably a bit too crazy. There are servos smaller than those motors, um, but there is only so small you can 3D print as well and get all the other discrete electronics. So I think that's probably about as small as we can go for now. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, it was just a quick one, really, to show you the Smiles Mini and to sort of get that out there. And um, yeah, thanks for the coffee. Uh, I'll enjoy that and uh, see you on Sunday. Thanks everybody for watching, see you next time.